Now, many of you know my thoughts if you've seen any videos that I've posted. I think it's been pretty clear that I'm a big advocate of fenders on bicycles. I do have a couple of bikes that do not have fenders, but the ones that I like riding the most have fenders. So today, we're gonna install Honjo fenders. So let's go out into the shop and uh, I'll show you how to do this. Okay, so before we go out into the shop, let me just show you a couple things quickly on the bike here that you're gonna need to keep in mind when you're selecting fenders for your bike. This is a, this is a vintage steel Bianchi. The reason this is a good candidate for fenders is because in the day that this bike was made, they used much more generous clearances. So what I mean by that is if you look at the brakes here, you can see how much room there is around this brake. So, you know, there's a lot of room there. Also, you'll note the threaded um, brazon, which is actually not a brazon here, but this one is integral with uh, the dropout. That is for your fender stay. And then if you come down in here to the chain stay, you'll also notice how much clearance there is between the tire and the chain stays. This is not as generous as other bikes are, but this is good enough for what we're gonna be doing. Let's look at the dropout here. So you have your integral uh, threaded fender stay here. You also n will note how much actual clearance there is here in the brake, between the brake um, caliper and the fork crown. Plenty of clearance for fenders there. What you don't have on this bike that I like to have on all bikes, which will be here eventually, is a front rack. We need to put a front rack on <clears throat> so that the fender, when it's coming up to here, has another location to mount it that will help stabilize the fender. There are some off-the-shelf racks that you can get. I prefer uh, the brand Nito. Nito, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I really like their products. But there's also Velo Orange. There's also Soma. There's a lot of other companies. Rolland. There are companies out there that make racks that do have the braze on. So you want to look for that. Okay, let's go out into the shop. It's kind of been un an unusually cold winter. We're going to get set up, and I'm going to show you how I install Honjo fenders. And that is really one of the biggest benefits of Honjo fenders, is the freedom that, it, that they give you in terms of positioning them on your bike. So here's the hardware kit that comes with the fenders. You will need a few tools to do this. The exact tools that you need are going to be, sort of depend on, on how far you want to take the installation. So if you want to cut the stays, you're going to need something to cut them. There's a couple ways you can cut them. They're aluminum, so they're pretty soft and easy to cut. You can use some bolt cutters, but you're not going to have a nice clean cut. Or you can use some type of hacksaw. If you have a vise, you can cut them in, the, in a vise. So here's where your high school metal shop experience is gonna come in handy. But there's a lot of ways you can cut things and not use special tools. So what I'm gonna to try to do is show you how to do it real easily, but of course you can do it as more, you can do it however you want. You can sometimes use vice grips. I don't know if you know this, but right here, right here, there's actually a, a little bolt cutter right there. You can probably use vice grips because it's aluminum and it's really, really soft. You just have to tighten that down and then put the thing in. Make sure you measure it twice. Measure it twice and cut once. For the cleanest cut, I would recommend using just a regular old hacksaw and maybe use the vice grips to hold it or if you have a vice, you can hold it in a vice and use a hacksaw. Okay, so let's get going here. Let me show you all the parts and I'm gonna show you how we set it up. And uh, let's do a layout first. In your set, you're gonna have two fenders and they're going to be different lengths. So the longer one is gonna go in the rear 
and the shorter one's gonna go on the front. Let's just put the rear one in first. Let me show you this, but it doesn't fit in between the chain stays. That's okay, we just have to make a few minor modifications. Okay, let's set the front on here. Okay, so here we are, we're doing a quick mock-up. And these are, all I did was just set these on here. You can see that they do not fit between the chain stays without pushing them in there. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of a, a modification and I'll show you how to do that. That's sort of a quick mock-up. It's gonna move down, we're gonna move it down about an inch below. We're gonna, we're gonna basically mimic what we did on this bike, which is, you can see it hanging down right there. So that's about an inch below. And that kind of protects the bottom bracket. But by doing that, if you use that as a standard kind of a guide, what you get is a nice rear coverage. All right, now let's go take a look at the front here. This one's gonna be a little bit more personalized based on your preferences, but these are quite long. So you have a lot of options. What you wanna look out for is where you place this one. You don't want it, you don't want it too far up like that. Let me give you, give you a back view. You don't want it, you don't want it too far up because then the front fender is really far forward and it's not gonna have stability out there. You don't have a, a stay that will go up and connect to it, right? You're gonna have just one back here. And also, you want more protection here because the water, as the bike, as the wheel is spinning, water is spraying up. So the more you can get this fender down, the better coverage you'll have protecting your chain, protecting you from water spray. And that's why what I like to do is bring it so that you get good coverage off the front and good coverage off the back. And we can compare it to this bike. Let's take a quick look. You can see how I did it on this one. So that, that's, that one's really low, isn't it? And it gives you a full amount of coverage over the entire drivetrain. What I'm gonna do is basically copy what I did here, and I'll show you what those measurements are. So as you can see, the fender is about six inches from the ground. Let's come over here and position this fender in the same location. So right there, that's where we want it. All right, let's open up this hardware package real quick. Okay, so you've got the two aluminum stays, very light. This is really good hardware. I did not order the Daruma type of connector for the for some reason. I got this type instead, which is basically the L bracket version. And these are the little hangers for the stays. Well, that is the dullest razor blade. These here, they're basically like little U-shaped. They look like hose clamps almost. And basically they go on here and they become, let's see if this thing will focus. So here you have on here, you can slide them and that will, that will allow you to adjust where the stay goes in relation to your mounting point. Whoa, don't go that far. So you'll have to cut them once you get the fenders where you want them. The angle of these is wider than you want it. What you don't want to do is just clamp it like that and leave tension in, that leaves tension in these stays. What you're going to want to do is actually, when you get everything lined up, you're going to actually be bending. You want to put a little bend in these, and I recommend bending them so there's a bit of a straight, so that when they, when it goes on to here, when it mounts into here, it's actually straight so that you don't induce a stress, a bending stress in these stays by clamping it to the bike. And that'll make them last longer. In fact, let me show you, I'll show you how I did it on this other bike right over here. See how there's a slight bend in here? I put that bend in so that when this stay mounts to the dropout or to the brazon, it, 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 has a, it creates a flat surface for this clamp 
and it does not cause any kind of bending stress. Any kind of bending stress here is gonna cause the fender to either pull one side or the other. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna to need to do is decide what angle you want this to be at. Do you want it to be level with the ground or do you want it to be slightly down? That is, in a lot of ways, an, an aesthetic decision you'll have to make. If you go too high up, you're leaving this sort of un, unbraced. So what I would say is either go level or slightly, slightly lower just so you can get more stability here. The other thing you wanna maybe look at is when it comes to toe overlap, something you might want to be lower than your, your toe so you don't have that extra pedal strike op potential there. Okay, so what I did is I marked here with this red Sharpie the location of where I want this center line of this stay to be mounted to the fender. Now what I'm gonna do is show you how to find the center line of the fender, which is where you wanna put your mounting hardware in the center line. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So there's a number of ways you could do it. You could probably measure it, uh, but the problem is it's got a curved surface. What makes these hammered fenders a little bit easier to find the center is partly because the hammering is probably this, this hammered surface is probably in the center of the fender already, but the smooth fenders are not like that. So this technique I'm gonna show you will work for any surface to find the center line. And all you need is a piece of string, or in this case, a piece of twine. That's what I'm gonna use. Take your twine and just wrap it around the fender and tie it. Just make sure it's tight when it's tied. And we're gonna need to make two marks. We're gonna come to the flat side where it's flat. And we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna make two marks. We're gonna mark it with this Sharpie. And where I marked it is I put two little dots right on the center of these ridges, okay? Now you slide this apparatus and <clears throat> What you do is you, you fold it so that those two marks are next to each other. Just like those two little red marks are right adjacent to each other. So I don't know if this thing's gonna autofocus well enough, but if not, all you're doing, and I can describe this verbally, is putting, putting those two dots side by side, okay, like that. You see that? Okay, now that it's side by side, you just go ahead and make, close it <clears throat> like this. Just completely close it, and then right at the very tip of that, that is the center line. Mark it, little red, little red Sharpie. Now you've got your center line, and you're gonna use this on both fenders, so don't throw it away after you mark your first one. Slide it over to the red mark we made for our fender stay. Make sure that the two little red dots are back in alignment with where you put them originally. Now you have your center line. All right, so the mounting hardware that we're gonna be using for this version of the fender install are gonna be these U-shaped little clamps which have a threaded backing plate that will go on the inside. For consistency, we need to find the center of this curve. Well, there's a couple ways we can do it, and I'm, I'll show you how to find the center on here. Put a straight edge here. I drew a line. I put the straight edge here. I drew a line. So now I have two lines. Now what we do is we go, we draw a line off of this angle that's 90 degrees. So from this mark here, we measure a distance. So from there, so we mark we put our mark, we mark it here, okay? Okay, so we line up this with our line, put this on our mark, we just draw a line across there, okay? What we've done is we found this, this center point here. This point where these two cross is the center of this angle. So then what you do is you come back with your straight edge, you set your straight edge, you can draw a line. That is now the center of this 
stay. With both of our marks now, we've got the center line marked and the center line marked. Now what we can do is go ahead and mount this onto our fender with this and we need to drill two small holes. Okay, so I just uh, mounted, I just, I haven't tightened them down all the way. I didn't show you the whole process because it's just a couple of uh, Phillips head screws and then this little backing plate inside here. Now we can come back over to our bike here, back to my six inch mark from the ground, and we're gonna temporarily mount these onto, onto our, I think I'm gonna run a tap through here to this size, to this, to this thread. You might wanna get one of these, these things to double check the thread pitch. Uh, this is a metric thread pitch tool Okay, and it's a five millimeter screw. So I have a five millimeter with a 0.8 tap. That's what we're gonna use. So this is the part of the video where we make coffee. I went ahead and tapped and, and threaded these. Now, <clears throat> this is why you only wanna go one, one connection point at a time and I would start with these. So what we're trying to find is the best spot where we get the con most consistent line all the way from around. The tire is a good, this black line serves as our guide. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little bracket, my little angle bracket, and I'm gonna put it up here. I'm gonna take this nut off the brake. I'm gonna set it on there and I'm gonna use my Sharpie to mark where I want it to be located. If what you're trying to accomplish with this, uh, with this line if it cannot be accomplished because the diameter of the fender is wrong, so if the diameter needs to be reshaped because you're not getting a consistent line, what you do is you work, the, you, you grab it and you squeeze it together, and that, by squeezing it together, when you squeeze it, it makes the diameter bigger, and when you pull it apart, it makes the diameter smaller. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my bracketry out. I'm gonna line it up, I'm gonna mark it, I'm gonna drill it, and then I'm gonna put this one on, and we're gonna be basically done until I get the front rack. The stays, I put a little bit of a bend in them. We cut these to the right length. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this on and bend it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and snug that down. So that's in. There's a little bit of tension on it, but that's really good. But there it is without any front rack. So the front rack, when we go to do that, I mean, that's just the tiniest little bit of adjustment there. We'll align that on the front rack. You can see I have a pretty good uniform spacing here. Okay, so that's good. How's that look? To get a little better alignment, I can come up a little. So that means I, can, I need to come down here a little bit. Because I'm gonna bring these in just a slight bit. That'll help me with a little better top alignment. So it should be nearly perfect. Oh, how's the fender line look? Did I bring it in too much? I'm gonna come back out just about a millimeter here. That's gonna bring this back down and I'm gonna stick with that. Double check everything, we're good. We'll spin the tire, make sure we got good clearance. Plenty of clearance. Okay, there we are. Front fender install complete. Not too bad. Come on over here. So that's how that mounts on. Get a good side view. Look at that fender line all the way down to there. We got this. Our toe's not gonna touch that at all. Some nice clearance. Get yourself some nice metal fenders. You'll be so much happier in the long run. These things really don't add a lot of weight. These are not gonna rattle. They are super quiet. They last a really long time. If you bend them a little bit, it's no big deal. You can bend them back. I'm gonna do the back one now, but basically it's done the same way. The only difference is you have the chain stay bridge. 
uh, that you will need to work around and make sure you have a way to attach it. There's also the attachment up here. This bike has a very tall brake bridge, which is why it has such long reach brakes. That's okay, but what I'm noticing is to get this in, to be able to mount it with the proper tire, um, what am I trying to say? To get it to the proper height, I just measured from that bolt, which is where the, the bracket will hang from to mount to the fender, and I need a bracket that has about seven eighths drop. This one only has a quarter of an inch. So what we'll end up with is this angle bracket will be mounted to the fender and then providing an extension piece from here up to there. All right, so the next step here, we're gonna go ahead and install the rear stay. Okay, so I just have this hardware temporarily placed in here so that I can see where I wanna place the rear stay. Now, one, one thing you could do, because this is more or less an aesthetic decision, you could align this horizontally with the angle of the chain stay. That might give it sort of a nice running line across here. And in this case, the fender's long enough that I have a decent amount of fender still hanging below it, but not too much. And, and I still have good stability back at the rear part of the fender. So those are some, some things you can decide on in how you do it. Another way to do this would be to come off this plane and have an angle such as that with consideration of not going too far. Because if you're way up here, then the back of this doesn't have any stability. And if you're way, way down here, then it just doesn't look right with, to my, in my, to my eye. Your eye is different. But to my eye, that looks a little too low. I don't like that there's an, a line coming up this way and then it's dropping down. So my, my thinking is either mimic this line or come up slightly to change the line and to bring this line in, which kind of tapers the bike. In my mind, that kind of closes the, the bike a little bit. So it's going to be somewhere in between here and that's the decision I need to make. 90% finished with the fender install. I've mounted this stay with the, the supplied clamp and then I've set the angle that I, that I liked. I got it to come, I didn't go exactly with this angle here. I gave it a little bit more of a slightly up and I kind of like how it sort of draws it to an end out on the back. Anyway, that's a, just a personal preference. You can do it however you like. The only thing that has not been done yet, and that is installing the angle from the fender to this mount. So Hanjo supplied two different, two angles to mount this, the front and the back. The front was about three quarters of an inch drop, and then there was this one that has about a quarter of an inch. So the quarter of an inch isn't tall enough for my rear fender installation. So I went ahead and made this little special extension piece. Unfortunately, this won't work either. So if they had supplied two of the same ones, two of the long ones and two of the short ones, I could have worked with it but they only gave me one of each. So that's okay. Basically it's the same, it's the repeat of the front. All you would do is drill the two holes in the fenders, mount this to the fender, and then bolt it to the brake bridge. And that's it. I will, uh, a, a few final touches on this will be to put the proper bend in the stays so that they're, as I say, they're not putting any tension in. I don't want to do that yet because I want to make sure that this is mounted first and then I have enough left over. And then the last thing you'll do is you'll trim off the stays like I did on the front. In the back, we'll, we'll cut them short just like that so they don't stick out too far. See how here they're, they're a little long? We want to cut these back. I'll even improve on the, the, the line here for the, the fender line to tire. I will work on that once I get the bracket. 
So that's it. So that completes this video for how to install Hanjo fenders. We used the more traditional method of angle brackets. We did not use the Daruma method, which is where you mount it up inside the fork crown, which is a very clean way to mount it. If you like this video and you like these sort of how-to installation videos, please give this a thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, give it a thumbs down and please let me know what you didn't like about it. It's a lot more informative for me if you actually explain why you don't like the video than it is to just leave a thumbs down and walk away. And I do appreciate all the subscriptions. I appreciate all of the likes and the comments. Thanks for watching and uh, I hope to see you in the next one real soon.